Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a lot of stuff in store for you guys that is going to be pretty dang cool. A lot of parts have been coming in and as you guys know I've been working on the suspension really, really hard lately. I've been trying to get a lot of stuff done on the car being that it's been on stock suspension for its entire life and I've had the car for probably nine months now and uh, we finally got our first nine second pass on the stock suspension and I figured that it was finally time to beef up the suspension to get some upgrades in there. BMR as you guys know in the last video sent me a bunch of stuff. They really helped me out a ton. I'm still waiting on a lot more parts, trust me. But as you guys see, I've already received a few of them right here. So we're going to jump into that here in just a second. Check this out. I was talking about how somehow my axle boot right here tore. Anyways, I contacted them about it and I was like, hey, I know that these have a lifetime warranty. Could you guys possibly help me out? They contacted back and they were like, absolutely. We'll get one sent out to you. Well, check this out. You guys remember the video where I went and sold Dom the Grom the other day? If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But anyways, he showed up and he was like, hey, guess what? And I was like, what? He's like, this box is for you. And uh, it was from GeForce. He knew somebody that worked at GeForce, I believe. I'm not sure the exact specifics of it, but they gave him a box to take with him whenever he was coming to buy the Grom, and it contained all the parts that I needed and uh, some replacement boots, and not only one, but they actually sent me another one just in case. So huge thanks to GeForce. That right there is like top-notch customer support. Yeah, I emailed them one day. The next day, I went to go sell a Grom, and the guy happened to know him, and he had the boots in hand, and he was like, here. That was really cool. So here is the cool part of today's video. So... As you guys know, um, Garrett Cletus McFarland, if you guys know him, uh, he's got Leroy, right? And he's got a few other cars that they're very fast, right? Leroy is the world's fastest GM stick car. It's a really cool title to have. But anyways, at an event that we were at one day, I was talking to him and he was looking at my car or whatever. And we were talking about how to make it go a little bit faster and basically my goals for the car. And uh, he was saying, well, he was basically explaining some of his magic for the reasoning for his car going fast and trying to help me out to basically follow in the same footsteps. I look up to Garrett a lot. It's pretty cool. He's got a stick car going that fast. And obviously, as you guys know, if you've been following this channel for a while, stick car is like my thing. I love stick car. I will be driving manual sports cars till the day that I die. I don't know what it is, but for me, whenever you go really fast in a manual car at a drag strip, it's way more impressive than going really fast in an automatic. It takes a lot more time, it takes a lot more effort, etc. So it's really cool and really rewarding to do that in a manual car. But uh, what I'm about to pull out of this box, you've probably never seen except for in drift cars, right? So any cars that you have seen at drift events and stuff like that, you'll notice. You'll know, just let me just, I'll just let's get this thing opened up. Oh yeah, check this out. This is a uh, is a hydro e-brake or drift handle or whatever you want to call it. So let me throw that box out of the way. But essentially what this is, is you notice right here, there is a brake reservoir, right? So you fill this brake reservoir up with brake fluid, same way as most brake systems work. And right here, see it's got an AN fitting and you actually screw on an, another AN fitting and it's got a brake line that comes off of it. And this will go to your rear brake caliper. Whenever you pull this, it's gonna lock up your rear brake calipers, right? The reason that I'm going to be needing one of these is not because I'm turning my car into a drift car, unfortunately. This idea was basically put into place by Garrett or Cleus McFarland. So huge thanks to him if you're watching this. Thank you so much, man. So that's pretty much my goal right now is to incorporate this into my car. I'm gonna explain to you guys how. I'm not exactly sure on a location yet, but I've got a few things in mind. This is gonna be mounted inside the car, right? So whenever you pull on this hydro handle, it's gonna lock up the rear brakes, being that it's gonna have a dual rear caliper, but I'll talk to you about that in a second. So it's gonna lock up the rear brakes and the rear wheels, and it's gonna hold those wheels completely planted, and it's gonna allow me to slip the clutch just a little bit to basically get a bind on the drive line. So basically all that's gonna happen after that is I'm gonna flick that up, and let it go and the car is going to launch as I'm slipping the clutch all the way out. Everything is going to have to happen simultaneously and it's going to be a learning curve to get used to it. But that is my idea that I have in mind to be able to use this for is uh, basically for staging. And what happens right now is I try to get whenever I'm launching, I try to get the clutch right on that point of like where the car is almost about to move and then I get my RPMs up and then I'll just slip it out. But what happens sometimes is I'll get right on the, on the staging line and I'll slip the clutch up and the car will start moving and it will actually break the beams. I'll either red light or it'll start my time before I actually take off. And that's what happened at Cletus and Cars. I ran like an 11.5 and I was like, what in the hell is going on? And then I realized I broke the beams and blah, blah, blah. It was a big mess. But anyways, so I was talking to him and he was helping me out with this. So long story short, the goal is like I was saying, pull this, slip the clutch, 
to where the car should be moving, but it's not because I'm holding this and yanking back on it and holding the car completely still, not letting it move. And as soon as that light lights up green, flick this forward, dump the clutch all the way, and then the car is just gonna literally rocket ship off of the line. The foot brake, which is down there, it's still gonna work like normal. It's still gonna have the back caliper right here that's gonna stop it with the foot brake. This front caliper is only going to be used whenever that handbrake in the inside of the car is pulled. It is kind of complicating, and I'm sorry that I can't explain it any better, so if you're not following, I really do apologize, but I promise you we'll get it once I get all the parts in. It's just hard to explain the concept without having like a something in hand to be able to show you guys but the brakes will be in i'm going to be assembling as much suspension as i can today and i'm going to be waiting on my new shocks which i'm really excited to announce to you guys whenever they get here as well so everything is really starting to fall into line but uh yeah i've got a lot of stuff to do today so let's hop right into it anyways like you guys saw if you saw me taking off this lower control arm right here this exhaust right here the piping is completely in the way of the bolt that goes through here to hold the lower control arm right here so i'm going to pull this exhaust down and we'll try to Come on, get off of there. That shouldn't fall. Let's get this thing lined up and see if we can get some bolts put back in it. How is this? Oh, come on. Get under here. Okay, here we go, it's threading in now. Yes. Back into place, oh yeah. Lower bolt goes there on the hanger. Boom. Perfect. It was about mm, that tight. That's proper torque specs right there. Tight enough. And one more. Ooh. That will do. Lower control arm reinstalled. That's nuts. Wow. Oh yeah, that is definitely going to make for a terrible ride, but man, is this thing going to do well on a track after this. Okay, so that is in place. Now I'm gonna tighten this bolt up here at the top and we'll move on. Okay, that's good. God, this thing is so annoying. Mm. Oh, it's so springy. Normally right now, I would be replacing the axle, but like I said, I gotta replace that boot first. Well, let me just put that little damper down here at the bottom, and this upper goes here. Oh my gosh, this thing is enormous. Crap. This is gonna be the fun part. I've got to get this to sit there, like so, and I've gotta get that on this post, as well as on the bottom. Hmm. Oh, I know I can loosen my subframe, but I really don't wanna loosen my subframe. Oh, uh, let's see here. Hmm. How you doing? What in the hell? I'm coming to help you. You're coming to help me? Yeah. Yay! I'm over here trying to figure out how to get the spring in this boot and the lower control arm, but problem is that my other ones were not beefy springs, so like I could easily get them in and out. This is a little bit. I feel like I'm about to disappoint a lot of people with how I'm gonna get the spring on here, but I'm gonna do it. We're gonna do it. God, everything's getting stiff. You got a spindle right here, man. Watch out. Watch your spindle, cuz. I can do it on the back front, back. but the problem is that it's gonna be very hard to do on the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'm with you. I have an idea. Okay, pull that out. <laughs> Ow, oh, hey! <laughs> Wait, sorry, BMR, we don't do things right around here. Yeah, feel how <laughs> stiff these bushings are. This car is about to ride like a horse and chariot. We got the spring in there. Like I said, I've got to replace the boot before I can slide the axle in for the diff right there. Okay, so Daniel just running right now to go grab the uh, axle tool from our friend Adam's house, and we're gonna get that boot replaced. So I'm pretty much done on this side. We're gonna fast forward a little bit, and I'm gonna go finish up exactly where I'm at on this side, but on the other side, and I'm not gonna make you guys watch all that boring crap again. So anyways, I will talk to you when Daniel gets back. We're gonna get that boot replaced on there. I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And we're gonna, yeah, we're just, whatever. Fast forward. Daniel got back with the axle tool right here. So this is gonna help us replace the boot. I've actually never used one. So me and Daniel are about to play, figure out how to use this thing. We've gotta fill that whole thing with this grease a bit. And we've got our two straps. Oh, this thing is stupid beefy. Okay, now we're gonna tighten down on this vice. It can't be that bad. It, it sucks. No. Yeah. Oops. We've got our Allen that fits right there. Let me get my impact. Um, let's see what this thing does. Oops. Nope. It said it wasn't coming out and this Milwaukee said big bet. Shoot, boy. You think you aren't coming out today? Let me just show you what my good friend Milwaukee's got to say. Dang, them things are in there, boy. What is the torque specs on this thing whenever I gotta reassemble it back? That's 
and just get you a rag you don't like and just get all the grease out as much as possible. Okay, here we go. Let me just walk you guys through what's going on right now. We've got the hub off of the CV here and um, okay, here we go. Snap ring is coming out. Okay, yep, I see how you almost what, lost yeah, it. Don't lose it. She was a runner, but she didn't make it. Oh yeah, the boot's torn, I forgot. All right, give me that thing. I just pulled that band off, and essentially what that's gonna allow for, so now you see the band is off all the way, and we can slide this torn, well maybe, it's on there. <laughs> there we go. You can just go. Oh, listen to that. Feel all that dirt in there from where it broke? Trash it. Just pull on it really hard. <sighs> Got that band off. So basically right now we've got the hub itself off and we're trying to get this half of it off. This is what we need to put and this is a replacement of that right there. Teamwork. There we go. Okay, so we've got our new packet right here full of genuine grease for constant velocity joints, which yeah. is what CV stands for. So where's my sazers? I just had them up here somewhere. Let's cut this bag open, this sack of grease. We're gonna fill up a good bit of it inside of this boot right here. Yeah, it looks about good. Bring this thing back down. We're putting on the new half right now, the new cover and the new boot and everything. Let's line this thing up with some, some bolts. There we go. Let's give it some tappy tappy. This, is, this is not, yeah, I was about to say, this is where it's gonna get complicating. I gotta have this straight because if I don't, then the bearing is gonna wanna sink out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that's small. <laughs> God, how are we supposed to get that through? <laughs> oh, well, I see how now. Okay, we've got the boot on there. I see now, you wrap it as far as you can, and then you fold it over, right? Oh, God. All right, hold that right there. I can see me. This is the one of the most irritating parts. God, dude, no way. And it doesn't help that it's soaked in grease, so like, the little pins of the snap ring pliers just keep slipping out. <laughs> Victory. Get. Yeah. That was real nice. That felt good. I'm gonna shove it out to the outsides and I'm just gonna show. Oh, yeah. Most people outsource for this kind of work. Me and Daniel, we just come out here to the garage and use four wheeler knowledge to rebuild 1800 horsepower axles. I'm just oh, you're putting it on. Yeah. You wanna put it on. And we're gonna thread that a little bit in there. And we're gonna thread that a little bit in there. And then watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna take my little hammer and, well, it slid. Never mind, it slid on. Bang it. I was hoping to bang it, but okay. Can you do me a favor and look up the torque specs on these? Why? <laughs> what do you mean? Why would we do that? Did you see what it took to get it out? I'm pretty sure we could do the same thing to put it back in. It'd be fine. It's sad because I agree with you, but I don't. <laughs> I don't want to. Everything needs a proper torque spec. Which is tight. As tight as you can get it without snapping it. That's about good enough for me. I mean, what what else could possibly go wrong with the axle bolts? Yeah. Okay, we've got everything almost back together. Now we're just gonna. We're just gonna tighten this thing. Come on. Yep, that's good. That right there it looks a, like a, a nicely axle. installed new boot. Check that out. It's full of grease. It's like a brand new axle now. It's like it was never even torn. Yeah. I'm gonna torque these down to the proper torque spec off camera so you guys can't judge me on the way that I do my torque specs. <laughs> And then we're gonna get this thing slapped back in the car. Okay. <laughs> we have our basically brand new axle ready to go back in. <laughs> okay guys, we've got the axles reinstalled. We've got the suspension all done on this side as far as we can go for now. Like I said, I'm still waiting on my shocks. I'm still waiting on my brakes. So I can't put the spindle back on the suspension right now. But what we can do is work on my favorite part of the day, trying to turn my car into a drift car and figuring out where I'm gonna put my drift handle at. Daniel, would you like to assist me? This is the part that I needed your help with. I'd have to hold it back and flip it and then come down. That's why I was trying to like what the really the honestly the place that it needs to be is like right here. Where do you think I was just telling you to put it? In the cup holder right here. No, no, no. I said put it right here underneath cut out a little rectangle. Dude, right that hurts so me though. I don't want to cut my console up. I mean, technically I could be a real try hard and take the console completely out of the car. I really right hate to side with you about things like this because I don't like cutting my car up or anything like that. Well, but the thing is that it's going to look professional too. I, mean, I do I honestly just, think that if this was down here and there was a hole cut right here and then this be, one of the cup holders was completely missing. So you could so actually I could still have just, a cup holder. Yeah, you could just cut it in half right there. Okay, well, I guess we're going to look at taking out the center console. I want to take out, man, uh, this is not how this was supposed to go. <laughs> it was at this moment, I'm going to remember forever as the moment where my car went full send. <laughs> we are taking out the center console right here right now. We're going to find a place to melt this hydro handle. Oh. Let me clean out my collection of quarters that I forgot that I had in this car. 
try to get the shift knob off and then we're gonna get this thing slid up. I see there's two bolts up here, two bolts down there on each side, two bolts in the console in here. So yeah, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna get this shift knob out. Oh, yeah, this thing's getting toast. No, it's not. Oh, yep, it is. Toast. Oh, oh, yep, character. That's what we call it. When your shift knob gets stuck, you gotta find ways to get it off. Okay, well, new shift knob coming soon. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, that kept it from getting destroyed. Oh. Got it. Shift boot, reverse lockout, and all that crap out of the way. Now we're stuck here with our junky MT82. One more panel right here. I feel so bad for this car. I did not want to take this thing apart like this. Okay. That's a weird, that's an interesting hidden compartment that I never knew was there in the cup holder. Check that out. I'm pretty sure. Let me see that wrench. <laughs> I mean, we're going to find out eventually. All right. Let's, oh. There's oh boy, I need a flathead. Oh, oh, yup. I feel it. like underneath these leather things, oh, I'm saying I think there's like a bolt. Mm. Oh. We're getting somewhere. Got it. Okay, check that out. Okay, center console is in the back seat. Daniel's a pro at removing his interior. Yeah. By the way, guys, the reason that we're trying to take out the stock e-brake on this car is because we're not going to be able to use it uh, because I have obviously getting the hydro and the dual calipers in the bag. The aftermarket calipers do not have a hookup for the cable e-brake. So the e-brake is actually no longer going to be used. We're getting there, guys. We almost have the whole console removed. There's bolts hidden everywhere on this thing. This poor car. I feel like everybody on YouTube after seeing this is gonna like be like, no. Oh no, oh no. Ah, man. Uh, ow. Look at this mess of a car right now, man. E-brake is out. We've got the bracket out of the way. I can send it out the car, I guess. <laughs> now, all that we're left with inside the car is the e-brake cable, which we don't need anymore, like I was saying, because uh, yeah, we're not gonna be using that anymore. We're gonna be using hydraulic with our hydro, so. Uh -huh. Makes me feel, oh, sorry, buddy. So you're talking about like an L shape, like well, I was gonna say just an L shape bracket like that mm -hmm. and a bar facing like that. Put a plate underneath it. So we're getting somewhere. I wonder. But then what you got? So we'd be staging right now on the line, pull the hydro, it's gonna lock the rear, slip the clutch while hitting the gas. That way that we're getting the RPMs up, we're getting the clutch slipping so it's ready to take off right now. If I were to hold this and like barely slip it, the car would start moving forward. So I'd have to hold this, slip the clutch up, it'd be burning the clutch, burning the clutch, burning the clutch last minute light turns green flick that up and as i flick it open i'm gonna have to dump the clutch all the way and just floor it this is gonna be oh, gold look, slip it dump it take off i'm telling you i'm gunning for the world record time for a stick shift s550 that's all i want either that or like an eight second car that'd be cool too stick shift eight second car oh yeah brother i'm not gonna reveal too many goals right now though but we're gonna aim for whatever i can get for now though i think we have a general idea of where i want to put my hydro handle and then i'm gonna have to put the hydro handle in there measure on the top part of this so it's gonna be something like yeah, it's hard to it's hard to do because I haven't cut holes yet But obviously you see that after I cut everything this is gonna sit back where it was uh, This reservoir is probably gonna be in the cup holder right here Which is gonna be perfect and we will be able to put the console back over this uh, and it will look really professional I think I think this build is coming along nicely so far There's a few last things that we need to do today before we end today's video though We need to go under there and see if we can get this uh, this cable out Because that's all that I really care about right now is just to get this cable out once we get the e-brake cable out though everything else will basically come into line I just got to get uh, measurements later on for how long I need my line to be one line comes off of here and then it splits into a like kind of like a T so you can imagine a T fitting one comes out of here and then it splits off to go to each wheel in the back so once we get the dual calipers in I'll show you guys more about that but uh, yeah so everything's coming along really nicely though okay we have a lot of stuff to, oh man, it came out. We're gonna get these e-brake cables taken out. Man, this sucks. We gotta do this on both sides, so we'll have. Mm. Yeah. This video is probably all over the place. It's literally just a video of different parts of me destroying my car, so I'm sorry. What in the hell? Oh, it's on the gas tank strap right here. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be extremely hard to see on camera, guys, so I do apologize, but uh, up here, you see this little bracket? I've got to take the e-brake components out of that. So give me a minute. Wait, actually while Daniel's doing that, let me take out the rest of this crap. This is really tight space up under here. I feel like I'm destroying a really expensive car. E-brake cable, one of the brackets is above the drive shaft up here. Oh, it's hard to see again, because we're under the car on jack stands on the ground, but we got the e-brake cable out from the driver's side. There we go. 
Oh. What is in my butt? Okay, here we go. This has got to come off. Okay, so we've got the passenger side cable loose here. Skabam. Okay, one more bracket uh, right here. I'm trying to get the get bottom. It? I'm trying to get the bottom part of that. Where's the suppliers? We got the e-brake cable out of here. See that hole right there? That's where it was stuck. But we got the cable and everything out. Check it out. We've got the hydro pretty much mocked up to the position that we want it to be in. We just got to figure out some way to get that thing mounted up in there. But it's looking pretty cool. The hydro's going to be in a place to where I can actually get to it right here and then get to the shifter directly after. And if I need to, I can get right here to the steering wheel to get another hand on the wheel just in case. Loss of traction or anything like that. But everything is super, super messy in here. But we're going to get it all cleaned up. We've been on version one of the car since I bought it. And now we're about to literally just take it to a whole nother level and we're just i guess version two is what i could say stage stage two yeah uh -huh. stage two of this build is about to really and then stage three will be turbos that is probably going to be the end of today's video it has been a really crazy day trying to get this car to where it needs to be sorry that these videos are kind of boring it's not really enter anything entertaining per se but i'm actually just working towards like i said getting this car completely built and carrying you guys along the process so it's winter time anyway, so we can't do much racing here. So we're taking that time to do a lot of the build process on this car. And boy, is it going to get wild. So I uh, got to a stopping point. So I will see you guys next video.